The Leader of the Opposition is seeking the call. Yes, Madam Speaker. Uh, I uh, move that so much of the standing and sessional orders be suspended as would prevent the Leader of the Opposition from moving the following motion. That this House calls on the government to end its uh, internal arguments and actually to get on with governing this country. Yeah. And if it can't, to restore the selection of the Prime Minister to the people in an election where it should be. Uh, Madam Speaker, I move this way. I move this way. Standing orders must be suspended because right now in this building no one is interested in the proceedings of this parliament. Everyone is interested in the conversations that are taking place in corridors. Everyone is interested uh, in the plotting that is going on inside offices. And what that's all about, Madam Speaker, is yet another deal inside the Labor Party, yet another deal between the faceless men to try to work out which particular leader is going to give them the best chance of winning the election. Well, I say, Madam Speaker, the public are sick of the deals behind closed doors. The public are sick of the incompetence. They're sick of the deception. What they want is their chance to determine the future of the country. What they want is their chance to vote for a government and to decide who should be the Prime Minister of this country. And they deserve it. And they deserve it sooner than it will happen <laughs> under the current Prime Minister. Madam Speaker. The poison inside the Australian Labor Party is paralysing government in this country. And every hour, every day that this is not resolved, the paralysis inside the government just gets worse and worse. That's why standing orders should be suspended. What we saw today uh, were the resignations, uh, or at least the indications, uh, 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 that the strongest supporters of this Prime Minister. The members for Lyon and the members for New England uh, are not going to contest uh, the election. Uh, we see uh, the tremors, the tremors of leadership change shaking the foundations of this parliament. Well, I say let's debate it honestly in this chamber. Uh, let the Prime Minister say honestly uh, why she should uh, retain the job. Let the member for Griffiths say honestly uh, why he should be given the job, but above all else, let the Australian people have their chance to decide who should be the Prime Minister of this country and let that chance come as soon as possible. Yeah. We deserve so much better than this, Madam Speaker. We deserve so much better than this. I say to the Australian people, do not think that what you have seen over the last three years is the best that this parliament can do. We can do so much better for you than this Prime Minister and this government has done for you, and we will do it if we are given the chance at the forthcoming election. Let's bring on the election and let's put the future of this country in the hands of the people rather than allowing it to continue to be traded by the faceless men in their ceaseless quest to come up with a less unpopular Prime Minister than the one we currently have. Yeah. Madam Speaker, standing orders must be suspended because this is the only question that is really consuming the members of this parliament right now. It's the only question that can plausibly and credibly be for the parliament right now. How can we get a better government? How can we resolve the problems facing our country? And the only way to get a better government is to have an election. And the only way to resolve the problems facing this country is to get a better government. And the only way we can do that is with an election. Madam Speaker, it gives me no joy to say in the course of this motion of suspension of standing orders that we all wished the Prime Minister well uh, when she came uh, into office on the 24th of June uh, 2010. I was conscious, very conscious, of, as the father of three daughters, of just what a milestone in our national life had been achieved. I was conscious of the significance of the occasion, and while I deeply regretted 
While I deeply regretted the sustained plotting and treachery uh, that had resulted uh, in the change of leadership, nevertheless, I thought that it was an opportunity for our country to make a new beginning. A bad government, she said, had a good government, she said, uh, had lost its way. But what we now know from subsequent statements by this Prime Minister that even she knew that it was a bad government. It wasn't a good government uh, that had lost its way. It was a bad government, paralysed by chaos and dysfunction uh, because uh, the member for Griffiths was incapable of adequately leading it. But the trouble, Madam Speaker, and this is why the standing orders should be suspended. The trouble is that every single problem has just got worse in the three years since the 24th of June. She said she was going to fix the climate change issue. Well, what did we get? We got the pre-election declaration there would be no carbon tax under the government I lead and the post-election decision to have a carbon tax. So the Prime Minister's leadership was paralysed from the outset by two acts of deception, two acts of treachery. That's why, that's why standing orders should be suspended. First of all, there was the betrayal uh, of the member for Griffiths, the former Prime Minister. Then there was the betrayal of the Australian people uh, through uh, the carbon tax that was never going to happen. But the betrayal went on. There was the betrayal of the member for Denison, Mr Wilkie, uh, who was going to get poker machine reform, but he didn't. There was a betrayal of the member for Scullin, the former speaker, uh, whose speakership was terminated because it suited the political convenience of the Prime Minister to do so. There's been the sheer incompetence uh, of a government and a Prime Minister which cannot get its spending under control, which is why standing orders should be suspended. Uh, there was the mining tax that was going to raise uh, $30-odd billion. Uh, but instead has raised a tiny, tiny fraction, some 5 per cent, uh, of the promised revenue. Uh, that's why standing orders should be suspended. And then, Madam, Deputy, Madam Speaker, there is the disaster on our borders. The disaster on our borders. And whether uh, the member for Lawler uh, or the member for Griffith uh, is the Prime Minister of this country and is leading the Labor Party for the time being, neither of them have a clue how to resolve the disaster on our borders. That's why standing orders should be suspended, because the only way to resolve the disaster on our borders is to put in place a strong government led by ministers who know what they are doing. Madam Speaker, this is such a great country. We are such a proud people. We have such a great future, but it is time the people of Australia were allowed to choose their government. It is time the people of Australia were allowed to choose their Prime Minister. We have seen three years of minority government. We have seen enough, Madam Speaker. Yeah, yeah. We know it doesn't work, and why should we limp on for another 80 days of confusion and paralysis uh, under the current regime. And, Madam Speaker, one of the things that the Australian people find so humiliating uh, at this time is that they know their future is at least as much in the hands of unelected union leaders as it is in the hands of elected members of parliament. And don't we know, Madam Speaker, and this is why standing orders should be suspended, don't we know that in the end all of this for the last three years has been about the unions. The AWU boss went on late line on that famous night to say that the Prime Minister's polling had collapsed, uh, therefore he should be replaced. Now, of course, uh, the same gentleman goes on late line, and this is why standing orders should be suspended, to say, sure, uh, the Prime Minister's polling has collapsed, but above all else, we must keep the current Prime Minister it's all about the unions. Right. Well, I say, forget the unions. Yeah. Let's think about the people. Yeah. Let's think about the people. Yeah. Let's give the people the say in who should be their prime minister and who should be their government. I say, what we should have in this country is democracy. 
of the people, by the people, for the people, not of the people, by the unions, for the unions. Let's support this motion. Let's have an election. Is the motion seconded? The member for Sturt. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I do second the motion. And can I say that I do so much more in sorrow than I do in anger? Because I do feel sorry for my country. I feel sorry that this country has had to put up with a government that has become such a shambles, such a dysfunctional embarrassment that has made us the laughing stock of our region and in some quarters in the world. I am sorry that our Prime Minister and our government has, so, has such contempt for the Australian people that they have so internally focused all their attention that standing orders need to be suspended today because it is more important to air the issues surrounding the Labor Party leadership again than it is to do any other item of business because the parliament, the media and the public are paralysed by the ongoing train wreck that this government and this country has become. So I am sorry for the Australian people. I'm sorry for them that they've had to put up for three years with the division and the dysfunction and the chaos and the bitterness and the poison that is the hallmark of this terrible, shambolic, embarrassing government. I'm sorry, Madam Speaker, that we've had to move this motion today because what we're seeing at the moment in Australia is a Prime Minister that has gone from being the hunter to the hunted, that started as Lady Macbeth three years ago and that this week we see her in the role of Madame Defarge, who thought she was going to an execution and it turned out to be her own. Today or tomorrow, the Labor Party appears to be moving against the Prime Minister. Yet again, three years later, almost to the day, the faceless men of the ALP, in their desperate attempt to scramble onto any floating boat, any floating device, believe that if they execute the Prime Minister politically, they may save themselves and their little bit of power that they have in the Labor caucus. But what are they changing to, Madam Speaker, if they do indeed change? What have they said about this apparent white knight riding over the hills to save the Labor Party, one of the worst governments in Australia's history? Who could serve from the front bench under a government that is headed by the member for Griffith? A, list, a litany of ministers have said they would not serve, Madam Speaker. The Treasurer, the Minister for Communications, the Minister for Schools, the Minister for Early Childhood, the Minister for Trade, the Minister for Health, the Minister for Resources. Seven ministers, most of them cabinet ministers, would immediately be forced to resign if the Labor Party returns to the member for Griffith a worse day of knives than the one that followed the Prime Minister seeing off the putative challenge in March this year. And what if the member for Griffith becomes the Prime Minister again? How could he lead a party that has refused to be led by him before? The Treasurer said about the member for Griffith, the party was given, has given the member for Griffith all the opportunities in the world, and he wasted them with his dysfunctional decision-making, his deeply demeaning attitude towards other people, including his caucus colleagues. He also said he sought to tear down the 2010 campaign, deliberately risking an Abbott prime ministership and now he undermines the government at every turn. The Treasurer said the truth is that Prime Minister Rudd is deeply flawed. Steve Gibbons, the retiring member of Bendigo, said only a psychopath with a giant ego would line up again after being comprehensively rejected by the overwhelming majority of his colleagues. The Minister for Water said, and the stories that were around of the chaos, of the temperament, of the inability to make decisions, they are not stories. And Stephen the Conroy member said the member for Griffith needs to refer well, to the standing motion orders need to be suspended, Madam chair. Speaker, so that we can air the conversations publicly that are happening in the corridors of the Parliament as we speak. Cor conversations like this one, where the member for Minister for Communications said Kevin Rudd had contempt for the cabinet, contempt for the cabinet members, contempt for the caucus contempt for the parliament, and the Australian people worked out he had contempt for them. Madam Speaker, standing orders should be suspended because the country deserves so much better than we are seeing from this government. 
and only a proper debate that airs all the grievances that the Labor Party has with the member for Griffith can clear the air this afternoon and allow an election to be held on August the 3rd to give the people the chance to decide, not the faceless men. The question is, the motion be agreed to. I call the Leader of the House. Thank you, Speaker. I rise for the 81st time in this <laughs> parliament to oppose a suspension of standing orders moved by those opposite. What we've seen, what we've seen from those opposite in recent times is an attempt by this bloke to remake himself. That's right. Human Tony, yeah, that's human it. Tony, that's standing it. up, moving a suspension, right. allegedly more in regret, more in sorrow than anger. Angry Tony's been put aside. That Mark Member Riley moment for to members there, we haven't seen title. for some time. And what we shouldn't do is indulge this Leader of the Opposition. That's why we shouldn't suspend standing orders. What we did hear from the Leader of the Opposition was the complete absence of a single policy idea. Here we are, the second last sitting day of this term, and not a single policy idea from the Leader of the Opposition or the Manager of Opposition Business. Well, I'll tell you what. Over coming months, up until September, they will not be able to get away with having no education policy, with no, having no health policy, with having no detail policy whatsoever. We on this side of the House have a plan for the future of the nation, and they exposed themselves early on when the Leader of the Opposition stood up at the beginning of this debate and he said, no one's interested in the parliament. No one's interested in the parliament. He's right that he is not interested in the parliament, but that does not excuse his projection. What we have had in this parliament today, today is the Australian Education Bills passed the parliament, a significant reform about the future of our young people. Earlier today, just prior to question time, we had the first stages passed, the second reading, of the 457 legislation, important legislation saying simply this, saying simply this, that before a 457 is applied, we should advertise and see if Australian workers are available first. One would have thought, one would have thought, not a radical proposition, but of course opposed by those opposite. The fact is we have engaged for three years in having to put up with the longest dummy spit in Australian political history. Because, because they don't see it's not that they don't see this government as being legitimate because it's Labor. They don't see any Labor government as being legitimate. They are born to rule these Tories opposite. Born to rule, they believe they have a right to the government benches, which is why they failed so dismally during the 17 days of negotiations with the cross bench. Those opposite also said, we know it doesn't work. Really? 590 pieces of legislation, important reform, putting a price on carbon, the Australian education bills, disability reform, in the area of the environment, the largest ever marine parks in the world the Tasmanian forestry reforms, aged care legislation, right across the whole spectrum. We have seen reform pass this House because we have been prepared to engage in the serious policy debates. The future is not assured. It can't be taken for granted. That's why you've got to do the hard work. And we on this side of the House do have a philosophical difference with those on the opposite. We believe that government has the ability to empower people and opportunity. We believe that government can play a positive role in people's lives. Those opposite think if government just get out of the way and leave it to market forces, it'll all be okay. There is a fundamental difference. However, the carbon, the carbon skeptics, of course, have also become the market skeptics. On the other side of the house, they have no plan for the future. Only three word slogans. A policy lightweight. We have no costings of any policies. They're trying to skate through 
to the election. And we have criticism, criticism of this government's performance. Well, let's just see. Let's do a comparison of how this treasurer, this treasurer has delivered in terms of Australia, the Australian economy. Have a look at this. Federal Labor, 5.1 per cent. Under Howard, 6.4. That was the monthly average. That sounds better. Inflation, 2.5 per cent under us, 2.6 under them. That sounds better. Home loan mortgage rate, 6.4 compared with 7.3. That sounds better. Household savings, 8.9 per cent compared with 2.3. That sounds better. Taxes as a percentage of GDP, 22 per cent rather than 23.4 per cent. It reached, a, it reached a high of 24.2 under those opposite. That sounds better as well. Government spending, average annual growth under us, 2.9, under them, 3.3. Larger government spending under the Howard government. The investment pipeline, it's 560 billion on, uh, under us, was 213 when we took office. That sounds better as well. On infrastructure in my portfolio, we were ranked as a nation 20th out of 25 OECD countries when I got sworn in as the minister. Now we're second, second yeah. in the world, creating that future productivity growth. And those opposite aren't quite sure whether infrastructure Australia is a good idea or whether they should claim it and say they're going to create it. A farcical situation. And why we shouldn't suspend standing orders? Why do I raise those figures, Speaker? Because they're trying to knock off their own MPI, which, if they hadn't just sat there, is from the shadow Treasurer the adverse impact of the government's economic policies on confidence. No wonder they don't want to debate about economic policy. Here they come in, here they come in, move a suspension rather than have an MPI debate on economic policy, because we know that they've got absolutely nothing to say. And what we saw from them today, Speaker, what we saw from them bizarrely on the day that Barack Obama makes a historic speech about tackling climate change, and just after China has, has uh, started an ETS that's bigger than ours, on that context, the second last day, you can imagine the tactics committee this morning. I know, we haven't had a crack about climate change for a while. Let's have a go. Well, let's have a look at what the figures are. Because you know, the markets were going to collapse. Well, the stock market's up 17.5 per cent. The value of shares on the ASX is up 200 billion. The official cash rate's down 0.75. Employment is up 164,000. House prices are up 1.7 per cent, and the value of housing stock is up 68 billion. I mean, success after success. But what they tried to do today was have it both ways. They tried to move again a disruptive suspension of standing orders, but we tried to have polite Tony, polite Tony, and not and not not quite as polite Chris. Because Chris doesn't do polite. <laughs> and they're trying to wipe from history the actions of the suspensions of standing orders, the fact that this bloke, brutal Tony, went outside to that disgraceful demonstration with those signs about the Prime Minister and was prepared to stand out there, stand out there and demand, demand an immediate election. Demand an immediate election. And that is what we have seen for three years from those opposite. Three years. They said this parliament wouldn't work. They're still saying that now, even though demonstrably it has, and it has a proud legislative record over the last three years. But now, instead of standing in front of those signs that none of them noticed, instead of aggro Tony, in here, we're trying to see in the lead up to the election to him, him go into a very small ball, a very small target, and sneak through, sneak through without any policies, without any focus. Well, I tell you what, during this coming election campaign, this leader of the opposition will have to, 
put forward his policies. He'll have to find them on education, on health, on uh, aged care, on infrastructure, on the environment. He'll have to find them. It's not good enough to say no, 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 no for all of the weeks of an election campaign. He will have to actually stand up and put forward his alternative vision. And we're happy to Members take on that debate today, tomorrow, expired. next week, next month, right up to September. The question is that the motion be agreed to. All of those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. I think the noes have it. Ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. Lock the doors. The question is the motion to suspend standing orders be agreed to. The ayes will pass the right of the chairs, the noes to the left. I appoint the members for Barker, 
and Parks, Tellers for the Eyes, and the members for Morton and McEwen, Tellers for the Nose. And on in complete indulgence, welcome my mum to the chamber.
The result of the division is ayes 73, noes 74. The question is therefore negated.